Today we're going to be taking a look at one of the most hyped sneakers dropping this month. We're also taking a look at a very limited pair of sneakers. And we got a whole bunch more, so let's uh, whip out the knife and get into it. What have we got here? Okay, okay. So this right here, it, it looks like a mid bar. Like, it's not a pair of mids. This one's very interesting to say the least. I actually don't know how they get away with calling these a high. So essentially these dropped a couple days ago on the Nike sneakers app. And we spoke about these on upcoming sneakers recently. And I thought I was super interested in just seeing why they're calling this one a Jordan 1 High. I've never seen a Golf Jordan 1 High version. And straight away, out of the box, you're gonna feel like this is much more of a mid than a, than a high. You can see it's significantly lower. Like, it definitely appears as a mid would. Like, it looks like a mid-cut Jordan 1. Honestly, I was kind of hoping to get something pretty cool here, which was actually a Jordan 1 High. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely a little bit disappointing. The leather is also very, very mid. It feels like a Jordan 1 mid, which usually comes with inferior leather quality. But let's hope the next ones aren't so disappointing. Let's keep it moving. All right, we got another pull tab over here. This is one that I'm pretty sure I'm gonna like a lot. These dropped the other day, and I believe they're still sitting on the Nike app, if I'm not wrong. This is uh, the Dunk Low Midnight Navy, I think these are called. These are actually super nice. I mean, take a look at them. They're pretty much traditional color blocking with a slight twist, and that is this gray Nike swoosh, which actually comes in a a pretty decent feeling suede material. There's actually a lot of things I really like about this pair of dunks. Like, first of all, the different, I guess you could say, branding, which kind of comes in like a college font, would be the uh, the Nike text on the tongue tag. You also get that Nike text on the insole as well. So it's not solid, bright white. It is just a fraction, a little bit more dulled down to give it, I guess, just a little bit more, a little bit more character, for lack of better word. And these are sitting in a bunch of different sizes, which I think, in my opinion, would make this the best Nike dunk that is currently sitting on shelves. You don't get incredible materials with the Nike Dunk. That's something that we've been saying for a very long period of time. Let me know what you guys think of the Midnight Navy Nike Dunk Low. To me, this is a straight banger. Today's video is sponsored by Sega Design. Sega Design makes some of the most incredibly designed watches I've ever seen. In fact, they actually won the GPHG Challenge Watch Award in 2021 for the Series U Blue Planet Watch. And they actually sent that watch over for me to test, which I have been for a few months. And it's definitely a head turner. The design of this watch is actually inspired by how time originates from the Earth's revolution and rotation. And that's actually how you tell the time on this watch. As you can see, there's no hands. What you do is use the navigation marker on the Earth in the center of the watch, which points to the outer minute dial. And that corresponds to the static hour dial on the outside. And you can see currently the time is 10 past 10. There's so much incredible detail in this Earth watch face because they used micro engraving technology giving the real ratio of Earth's land and sea. It's got both titanium alloy and stainless steel case options, a curved double sapphire glass, a super comfy strap made from fluorine rubber. It's also water resistant up to 30 meters and splash and rain proof. They also have a bunch of other incredibly designed watches on their website, some of which also won awards. I personally love the look of the Series M and the X. So use the links in my description to check them out. Of course, including the watch that we checked out today, the Series U Blue Planet. And a huge thanks to Seagull Watches for sponsoring today's video, but let's get back to it. All right, next up, I actually got a couple clothing pickups I wanted to show you guys. Uh, two hoodies, to be exact. And we'll start off with the one that I actually got for a steal. This is the Yeezy Gap uh, Dove hoodie. Now, initially, as you can see, it is used. Um, so I actually picked it up off of eBay. And it came in a bag, and you can definitely see it's been worn. It's been washed, so you can see that there's, like, kind of an overlay of fluff on it. This is kind of like the original black colorway that sold out instantly and now resells for a ton of money. And it's actually in really good condition for the price that I paid. I just thought like, man, I'm never gonna have the opportunity to buy this. Like they're not being made anymore. So I might as well pick up this original colorway, which is something that I've never had in hand. And I gotta say, yeah, this is definitely a more black colorway as opposed to the washed black, which looked black on the website, but when it turned up, it was not. So I think I paid 200 pounds, which is definitely a lot of money for a hoodie. But when you consider that this thing resells for like six to 800 brand new, pretty happy that I managed to find it. All right, and next up, we've got one which should be brand new. This one, I think, is gonna be very interesting. This is the Yeezy Gap Polar Fleece Hoodie. Again, similar vibe where, you know, I'm never gonna get this again. They're not being made. You're never gonna find this hoodie. This is brand new. As far as I can tell, it has never been worn. This is definitely an interesting hoodie. You've got, like, a little pocket at the front, uh, I guess, for your phone. And you've got the adjustable waistline, which is a really cool detail. Oh, and I just realized there's a receipt 
receipt in the pocket. Hey, there's the receipt, I guess, for this hoodie. Now, this is in US dollars, so obviously this is from America, and I assume this is in-store at Gap, which is really interesting. One thing that's a little bit annoying is that the cuffs are not adjustable, and they're also super loose, so you can't tighten the cuffs, which is something that I would have liked. Now, for size reference, I got a size small in both of them. Let's get into one which uh, is a lot more limited. In fact, I don't even know if these have released in the US or if they ever will. Oh man, we got some special packaging. Wow, take a look at that. So you've got the um, the plastic cover on the top. Man, and then the box feels luxurious. It has this soft touch feel, which is really, really interesting. Damn, here we go. This is the Nike Dunk Low Year of the Rabbit. These things are crazy. They are so, so cool, man. I will say that the base materials are a little bit flipped on this pair of sneakers. So you've got uh, suede as, I guess, the main layer. So the toe box, the, the lateral and the medial side. And then you've got leather overlays. And then one of the coolest things is the uh, transparent or translucent outsole. And as you can see underneath, you've got the 2011 and 2023 text underneath. Look, and they also give you some extra laces, which are sale, which actually could kind of tone down the colors on these. Because when you first take a look at them, I mean, that blue and that red is very, very loud. It is punchy, it is bright. So maybe swapping out the uh, stock blue laces for these sale ones might actually be a little bit of a uh, more wearable option. All right, let's get into the meat and potatoes. No special box, or it's, it's no longer the speckled box that we've seen on so many other Jordan 4s. You do have the original Jordan 4 style box. Oof. Man, these are looking clean, guys. This is the Jordan 4 Seafoam. That seafoam color is actually really, really nice on the Jordan 4. Like, it's it's not super loud and, and in your face kind of green. It's more subtle. Fade into the background of the black and the white. Makes this sneaker a very wearable colorway. Here's a look at it with the uh, military black 4s. You can kind of see, I mean, a lot of that white and black DNA is definitely in this pair of sneakers. Color blocking in general follows pretty much to the point the uh, Jordan 4 or fire reds. Pretty much just swap out all of the red elements on the fire reds uh, for this seafoam color. Yeah, these are actually dropping on February the 9th. Um, pretty random because it kind of is right in line with the Craft Jordan 4s, which drop on the 11th. And thinking about it now, these might be like one of the most, I guess, versatile or wearable colorways that's actually going to be dropping this year in terms of a Jordan 4. Like, think about what we've got upcoming. We've got the Craft 4s. Those are a little bit more specialist with the cracked leather and all of the different materials on it. We've got the Return of the Thunder 4s. We've got like another brown or olive canvas colorway. Red cements is another one. All of those, I would say this one ends up being, I guess you could say the most versatile and, and just kind of like a wearable colorway. Yeah, stoked to have this pair in. I think it's a super dope colorway. Of course, I'm going to give you guys a full review, put a fit together. You're going to get all the details and rundown before the release. Uh, that should be dropping tomorrow. But listen, I'd love to know your guys' thoughts on the Seafoam Jordan 4. Do you prefer these to the Craft 4s? Are you going to be making that decision? Are you going Crafts or Seafoam? And hey, while you wait for the review to drop on these, feel free to go and check out the review on the Craft 4s if you haven't already. <laughs>